from the combined newsrooms in Eugene, Roseburg, and Coos Bay. KVAL News at 6 starts now. Back to the breaking news we've been covering all morning long. We're on the scene of a structure of fire. This is in Shed in Lynn County. Multiple crews responding to not one but two homes on fire in the 30,000 block of Highway 99 East. Right now you can still see smoke coming out from one of the structures there. Earlier this morning we saw flames shooting out as well. According to fire departments on scene, this is the good news here. No one is hurt, but about 20 minutes ago, firefighters were forced to retreat due to exploding oxygen tanks. Now, right now, Highway 99 East is blocked due to the fire. I want to bring in John right now because, of course, we're going to continue to bring you the late breaking developments yep. and updates right here. But this is closed right now. Maybe you can show us exactly where this is. Yeah, and, and the good news now, our live shot buddy letting us know that they are starting to alternate traffic there to try to get things flowing again. So little by little going to open up. This is just a little ways north of Halsey over there in shed where this incident is occurring. So this is the area that's in question. If you are heading out that way, just keep in mind you might run into some emergency vehicles and some blockages on the roadways as this is still going to be something of a work in progress. But I tell you, there is definitely a lot to get excited about today in terms of the forecast, because instead of 80s or 90s or hundreds, we're only talking 70s this afternoon. That is a huge change of pace from what we've seen over the past well, a couple of weeks. It's been a while since we've had some of that cooler weather starting to settle in, and I think this just might stick around for a while from 50s and 60s this morning to some cooler weather all week long. We'll have the latest on exactly how big of a difference you can expect here coming up in my full forecast. Sean. All right, another big story we're covering this morning is the race to escape Afghanistan growing more desperate by the hour. Thousands of Afghans fearing their lives were on the line because they helped the U.S. military. An immigration attorney is working with more than a dozen families right now in Washington whose loved ones could end up trapped inside Afghanistan. They're trying to get line up visas, that is, and also coordinate with organizations that can help book flights out of the country. One of the things that we're hearing a lot of is uh, worry for women and young girls, particularly, you know, anyone who's involved in women's rights work or education. We're working every day on cases of interpreters or individuals that are there working to get them out of the country into a safe location. Now, President Joe Biden has authorized a half billion dollars to help Afghan refugees as well. Local veterans very angry and a loss for words. We have reaction now from those who served in the region who now express immense sadness for the Afghan people. Many American veterans worked with the Afghan people while abroad and they're extending those feelings toward the American troops who spent so much time working to liberate the country only to have all that progress undone in a matter of days. We asked a local Afghanistan veteran what he thinks about the exit of U.S. troops. What are your feelings, you know, seeing the country being taken over again after so much sacrifice on the part of American troops? It's frustrating. Uh, you know, my personal take on it was, you know, I figured we, it, it, we would leave the war um, behind, more or less, kind of like a Korea or Germany where, you know, we occupied during those conflicts and now we, we have bases there. I, I thought that's what would happen, but, you know, here we are now. As Biden sends thousands of U.S. troops back to Kabul, Mathis anticipates special forces staying in Afghanistan for a while and a potential return of soldiers to lend support. Of course, we're tracking these developments from Afghanistan as they change minute by minute, hour by hour. For the latest updates, you can always stay here on KVAL News. And when you're away from your TV, you can stay up to date at KVAL.com and on the KVAL Facebook page or even try out the KVAL News app direct to your phone. New this morning, the Eugene Police Department is looking for any information right now on three individuals we're showing you on your screen. They were involved, police say, in a burglary of a business last month that happened in the 2400 block of Hilliard Street. If you have any information regarding the incident or the identity, please contact Eugene Police. Meanwhile, the Coos County Sheriff's Office says a cell phone picture helped identify an arson suspect. Deputies arrested Kimberly Sturman Sunday night for allegedly trying to light a home on fire on East Cedar Street in Powers. Deputies say a resident smelled smoke, went outside and discovered Sturman trying to start a fire. We're told the resident used a garden hose to put out two fires at their property.
In our coronavirus coverage here at 605, over 11,000 people are infected with COVID-19 in Lane County as of Monday. Now that means hospitalizations are on the rise, according to Lane County Public Health. Health officials also say cases and hospitalizations have not been this high since November. And the only thing we didn't have then, vaccinations. Health officials say that they have helped and breakthrough cases remain low. We are seeing this bear out in our numbers that uh, the individuals who are the so-called breakthrough cases, those who are able to uh, receive uh, or those who have uh, contracted COVID-19 after vaccination um, continue to have uh, no or very little in the way of symptoms. Even though the number of vaccinations have climbed, Adam says doing more vaccinations remains one of their highest priorities. Well, Peace Health Riverbend announcing they're delaying scheduled surgeries due to the increase of COVID cases and hospitalizations. Surgeries were delayed to free up bed space and for staff to care for COVID patients in need. This decision mirrors other hospitals in the state like Mercy Medical Center and St. Charles as well. Douglas County reporting its youngest coronavirus death so far. According to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners, the individual just 27 years old. Coos County Health also says a statement issuing that COVID-19 has brought a strain on its health care systems. And due to this, the response time of contact tracing teams will be longer. We're talking 48 up to 72 hours. So public health is encouraging those who think that they've been exposed to the virus to contact their primary care provider. Also make a list of possible close contacts to share with tracing teams. There's a big, big push that is this morning to get kids vaccinated ahead of the new school year, which is fast approaching. Rates right now among middle school and high schoolers remain very low in comparison to other age groups eligible to get the shot. Over 65% of adults 35 and older are fully vaccinated, but according to the Washington Department of Health, less than 40% of 12 to 15 year olds can say the same. This Delta variant is so infectious. Um, it is up to our concern for all of us. You know, it is no longer the case that we can say, oh, thank goodness, kids aren't going to get that sick. It is just not, that is not true. Kids can get very sick. Doctors believe that many kids haven't gotten the shot because they and their parents feel that the risk of infection is low. They also say the Delta variant is changing all of that. If you are in need of a job, there is a big chance your local school district is now hiring. The National School Transportation Association says there's a major shortage of bus drivers right now, and they're concerned about providing consistent service throughout the year. The NSTA says the coronavirus, vaccine hesitancy, and enhanced unemployments are adding to the problem. Okay, Val, we're checking in with some local districts about whether they're experiencing any shortages. We'll bring you that information as soon as it comes in. Of course, we're committed to getting you all the information you need about your child's school as we're kicking off the school year in just a matter of weeks. In our wildfire coverage, evacuation levels have been downgraded for the middle complex, excuse me, the middle fork complex fire. The complex, which is comprised of the Quis, Gales and Nine Mile fires, currently just 7% contained. But crews are making progress in the Quist fire two miles north of Oak Ridge. Residents currently in the level two be set notice can return to operate under level one get ready guidelines. These areas include the ones you can see on your screen. You've got High Prairie, Fish Hatchery, Oak Ridge north of Roberts Road, and then Oak Ridge east of Salmon Creek. The Oak Ridge West Fur community is now at level one evacuation level. Lane County is also requesting the Red Cross shelter in place at Pleasant Hill High School be deactivated. And Green Hill is working to reunite evacuated animals with their owners over the next few days. Well, did you see this? A huge plume of smoke visible to the east of Eugene last night. This, we're told, is from the Gales Fire. It's part of the Middle Fork Complex, the Oak Ridge area as well. We're told because of temperature inversion, it's allowing already existing smoke to kind of climb straight up into the air in that form of a column. The Oregon Department of Forestry is also watching the smoke very closely for any major changes.
But all this just goes to show we are still certainly dealing with plenty of that wildfire danger, plenty of that smoke danger in our forecast as well. Even though conditions have begun to improve pretty dramatically, we're seeing those clouds that are moving through some lower clouds towards the Cascades and on the coastline, not leading to a lot of fog cover, but hey, it is certainly a difference in these early morning hours. And same thing with that chance for rain, how little it might be, uh, just a couple of scattered sprinkles, not much more than that, but still it is an opportunity to bring a little bit of much needed change into the picture. We need every little bit of help that we can get, especially considering, yep, we're still looking at some more fire weather danger down to our southeast fire weather warning going into effect for us this afternoon and evening, and it's really no surprise. It is still incredibly dry, even though temperatures are beginning to drop off at least a little bit. We only managed to hit the upper 80s yesterday. It's still pretty hot, but today we're only looking at mid 70s and that's the big difference out there. This cooler weather really hitting us in full force this afternoon and going to stick around through most of the extended forecast, not expecting a big time turnaround at any point through the next seven days. So get used to some of this cooler weather. I think it's going to stick with us through most of the extended forecast. And while the wet weather is definitely going to be short lived, those couple of isolated sprinkles kind of wrapping up for us by the lunch hour and from there on out staying dry through the next couple of days, there's at least the opportunity that we remove one of the major concerns when it comes to fire weather danger, getting rid of all of that heat. So how long are we going to have to wait before maybe we could see some more rain making its way back into town as well? We'll walk you through that and the latest impacts of that smoke on our air quality coming up in just a little bit. Sean? Well, John, it is 11 past the hour on this Tuesday morning straight up. A new investigation into Tesla's autopilot feature. When investigators say most of the crashes in question happen, we'll break it down. And rent assistance trickling out to people who need it coming up at 630. Questions about the slow rollout to people in charge of getting the money out. We'll explain.